friend Mai Gan from Escuela Carmen de las Cuevas, and that's where we are right now. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your experience here at the school and dancing in general. How did you start and uh, your career path and um, what brought you to Granada? What brought you to this school? I started dancing flamenco in New York in 2017 with uh, Sonia Oya. She's pretty famous. Um, and I started because my friend just was like, oh, I heard about this thing called flamenco. It's a Spanish dance. You want to come with me because she she knows I love dancing. And um, my grandma is from Spain. She's from Medilla, which is like the Africa part of Spain, next to Morocco. It's right on the border. So um, I grew up listening to flamenco, Spanish music, in my grandparents' house all the time. So I was like, okay, yeah, I know what flamenco is. Let's try it. And um, I mean, it's pretty funny because you you can't really do it without the zapatos. And it was like a $60 investment to just go to this class. And I was like, I guess I'm doing this for real. Because in 2017, $60 seemed like a lot of money. So yeah, I started then. And um, I also had another teacher and her name is Sol de Argentina. And she was actually a student here at Carmen de las Cuevas. And, um, you know, something about her telling me about Granada and the school here just kind of always stuck in my mind. And um, in 2019, I did a little trip in Andalusia with my sister, and we stopped in Granada for just like one day. And I, I needed to come see the school. So we came together, and uh, I remember kind of peeking in and looking at the class and ever since just kind of imagining coming back here and you know during COVID I wasn't able to dance flamenco and um, as soon as the opportunity presented itself I got on the plane and came and um, started with two weeks and it's been six months so I guess I like it. <laughs> You have a lot of experience at other forms of dance as well? Yeah, but mostly, you know, doing like partner dances, so salsa, bachata. Something I really like about flamenco is something you can just show up and practice by yourself. You're not relying on a partner, but you know, you do need the musicos. You need somebody who knows compas, you need a guitar player, you need a singer. And that's the other thing I love about flamenco is that you're working as a team and um, you're really using your body as an instrument. So um, I love that. So I can just come and practice by myself, but then apply it when I'm with you know, the other musician. Do you see uh, yourself in terms of taking the next step, taking it to the next level um, with your dance with Fumiko? <laughs> what's, what's the challenge? So, I mean, this is the most intensive experience I've ever had, I think, in my life. I'm an intense person, but to be here three hours plus every day, plus you're living in the residency with other students, so you're really like eating, breathing, sleeping, flamenco, and I think what a lot of people don't know about flamenco is it's not just like a dance, it's another language. So you really do need to immerse yourself in it to really have it click. And so now I'm really feeling confident and believing in myself as a flamenco dancer, understanding compas, um, having done all the different styles of dance here at Carmen de las Cuevas, which is a beautiful experience that every two weeks they change. So you, you know, you, you change palo, you change styles, you change teachers. So it's very intense and you're constantly learning. So what I'd like to do now is just kind of focus on 
one thing, give myself a little bit more time to really hone in one palo that I really like, create my own dance, um, choreograph my own dance, and hopefully perform. Um, but I see myself less as a performer and more of a teacher. So uh, it would be really great to take what I've learned back and um, write to studio, teach children, teach beginners, teach teach people, put together a little company, perform. So I think that's what I kind of imagine doing with this experience. Imagine doing that in New York City? Uh, no, maybe not in New York. Um, <laughs> I like Austin, Texas. I like California. Um, New York is really competitive and intense, and I lived there for 10 years and owned a coffee shop, and I feel like I really accomplish a lot in New York. Um, and it's really a place where dreams come true. So I can never say never, you know, but I think I'd like to try somewhere small where flamenco is not really well known and really introduce it to people and make them fall in love with it the same way I have. We're entering the stage. No, I learned Spanish here in Spain. Um, I did my study abroad in Italy, and then I moved back to Italy when I graduated college. Um, so I feel like having the Italian background really helped me with Spanish, but it also like confused me a lot because the words are similar, but they're not exactly the same. So I did a month in Cadiz at a school called K2. And then I did one more month in Valencia. No, that was about it, really. Like the Spanish started really kicking in after having the base um, here in Granada because all the classes are in Spanish, everyone you meet, all the friends, all the teachers, everything's in Spanish. And um, I'm really surprised by how far I've come with my Spanish speaking. Um, so I'm sorry. because they're singing in a style where they will cut off certain words so that they fit inside of the compas. So it's very hard to understand. I think even for a Spanish speaker, it can be really hard because their accent and the way that they're speaking in like, the, you know, for example, Andalusia is Andalu, you know, they're cutting off certain words. Um, what you need to listen to is the tone. And so if they're going up and you're waiting for the moment for them to drop so that you can play my pad together. Yeah. So I'm listening more for the tone. Um, but of course it helps to connect more with the lyric if you can understand what they're saying. Yeah. In flamenco, what are what are some new things that you want to learn that you haven't already um, in, in the world of flamenco? I think it's really important to do cante classes and I love to sing. Um, but I think uh, I have much more to go. The beautiful thing about flamenco, and you can see dancers who are 50, 60, 70, it's a kind of a lifetime hobby or something that you can just always continue to work and involve. Do you have um, uh, some social media you would like to announce if people want to find you? My Instagram is my Edith Gunn, and maybe you like on the bottom or oh, right? the bottom, right. <laughs> and in there there are in my stories there's um, flamenco from Granada and, and my past dancing experience and you can see because I at least want to remember you know I, I use my Instagram as like a, a vlog of my own of just like my memories and things that I want to remember so there for sure and um, yeah I think um, I want to start 
performing at some point. I know they have a scholarship program here, which I'm going to apply to. And if that works out, then I will perform at Agurea in December. I can just say, like, thank you to the school and to all my teachers and that I've learned so much and I'm so grateful for this experience. Um, you know, I think for Maria Manzania, you know, I'm, I'm always going to remember her classes and just like sweating profusely and Macarena's tangos, which when I go see her perform and she sees me in the audience, she'll always do something that we've did, done in class. And it's really inspiring to be like, yes, I know that and I can perform that. Yeah, I did. If I think of David, it's Buleria. I even cried in his class because I'm such a perfectionist and I wanted to get it right. And he's so supportive and really become like a friend to me here. And um, Estelle Marin is one of the most amazing dancers and um, choreographers and teachers. And I started to believe in myself as a dancer in her class because she really brings out the dancer and the soul and the energy of dance. Um, Javier, Seguiria, like, I, if I think Seguiria, I think of Javier because I, I learned it in his class and he's incredible and on another one of my favorite teachers here and I don't think I'm forgetting any of my teachers I hope I'm not but yeah Mari Carmen and Pilar and everyone so thank you so much I love it here starting out maybe somebody that just knows a little bit of salsa dancing and is interested in flamenco oh yeah I mean just don't give up and you know especially in salsa and if you love rhythm you're gonna get into it and from beginners to even you know advanced students that are just starting just um, keep on going and it's it's really worth it in the end because it's a it's a wave and we're all riding this wave together and you know I think about like the jam for example, the improvisation, the, those moments that you've practiced and you've tried so many times to get up and do like one yamada for buleria and something and when you get it, it's like wow because you're, you're catching that perfect wave with the guitar player, with the singer, your footwork, your movement, everyone around you doing compas and the energy of flamenco is so addicting when you finally feel that that you try to chase that again, even though it's hard. So yeah, I think just try it. It's fun and it's a good exercise. <laughs> uh, physically, it's, it's very demanding, much more so than playing guitar. Uh, yeah. What is your warm up routine? I mean, there's so much technique that's important to know so that you don't hurt yourself, um, you know, because it seems like we're just stopping, but if you are doing it properly, you won't hurt your knees, you won't hurt your, your body. But yeah, I mean, I always start with like crunches, push-ups to get myself kind of ready um, because it requires high energy. And then, um, you know, just kind of practicing technique and footwork. There's great YouTube videos. There's so many people on Instagram that you can follow. And um, then just make sure you stretch a lot to do that. Before and after? Yeah, I, mostly after, you know. Yeah. I think before I just try to warm my body up and kind of work out all the kinks and sore moments and then kind of go into class. Um, but there, it's a lot of core work. And I think also being a, a woman or really any kind of dancer, the beautiful thing about flamenco is you kind of just have to be like, look at me, I'm here. And that's something that I've really been working on. It doesn't naturally come to me. I'm a very social, outgoing person, but I am a little shy. And you know, you, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you're judging your movements, and you're trying to not judge, right? You're just trying to observe your body, look for the lines, um, but the self-confidence that this 
beautiful world gives you is incredible and um, it's very supportive because of the chaleos, you know, because you go out there and if people like what you're doing, they're going to tell you, you know, they're going to clap, they're going to say, oh, yeah. and that you feed off of that energy and you're not doing it for the ole, you're doing it because you want people to feel that energy with you. So I, I love that about Flamenco, the, the self-confidence and that being present in the moment because you really have to focus very hard on making a certain sound, the, the sonikete. And if for one second you kind of like think like, what am I gonna eat for lunch? Or about that guy that you were dating or whatever, you're gonna lose the compas and you're gonna lose the footwork. So I think it's almost meditative because you're in there just repeating and repeating and repeating and it's beautiful to just be in the moment. And I think that's another thing that I really gained from this experience. Thanks very much for your time. It's been lovely uh, uh, being here with you in, in, uh, in Squiz, like Carmen Nila Squiz. Best of luck to you in the future. Thank Hopefully you. I'll see you at uh, La Alborea. Gracias. Thanks, guys. And don't forget, if you want to watch more uh, videos like this, just click that subscribe button.